Hola, senoras and senoritas. Maybe. Wait, no, that's just the ladies. That didn't work out well at all. <laughs> yeah, just we're just. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of what are we? Whiskey entitled. Yep. That might be who we are. Yeah. This guy. Am I doing this the right yep. way? Yes. Is Professor Charles Xavier from the X Men? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, ch- I changed to Asian and I got hair on my head, so that's kind of. Oh, is yeah. No, this is awkward. <laughs> no wheelchair for me. Uh, so yes, I am the Drinking Caveman, and this guy over here with the brand new haircut. Look at I... you, all sexy. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> he had a, he had a date. And... Uh, is Wally, aka Scotch and Smith? Yes, that's who I am. That's wait a minute. That is, that who, is who I am. Yes. Okay. No, I didn't need to check that. I was checking something else. Okay. Um, all right. So today's episode is going to be about peated things for people who don't like peated things. Yep. Or Pete for non-peters. Yep. Try to say that, that fast you know, five times, right? <laughs> Pete for not peters. It just sounds yeah. creepy. Wait. Somebody commented, I think. I can't see what it says. It says also sniff. Yeah. I don't know who sniff is. That's me. I don't know. What's Maybe he's telling to sniff. Hey, hey. smell something. Oh, yeah. No. No. <laughs> I don't smell it. Oh, so maybe we should start at the beginning where we start where we normally start. What's in the uh, what's uh, just... what's in the glass? Alrighty. So um, for me today, you should... what? Whoa, 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 whoa! You should totally talk about your glass. My glass? That's not just any yep. glass. Single Mold Alliance has a glass. If you guys haven't seen this on Instagram, you know we are pretty big on Instagram. We, uh, you know, he wants to. Uh, he sorry, he wants to. He's donating seven dollars per glass. To a refugee family that he and his family have been supporting for a while. Um, I'm actually not sure where they're from, but um, any anywho, um, whenever a person wants to help someone else out in the whiskey community, I think all of us, you know, kind of get up in there and help. Um, a lot of people have been purchasing these glasses. You know, seven dollars. You know, that might not be a lot, but you know, with a group of us together, definitely help out. Um, so yeah, no, uh, it's a it's a great glass. Uh, Copita, Copta, Copita. Copita? I was on cup of yeah, glasses. So, like, I this is my first one ever. So I'm glad this is my first. Um, but no, it's it's great. Uh, it is a bit flimsy, just like the um, Glen Claren. That's the problem I have with those because for some reason I'm very very um, clumsy, so I drop stuff. So there you go, Myanmar. There you go. Thank you, Shimon. So yeah, so seven dollars <laughs> of those uh, of a glass goes to them. Um, I think that's great. I can't wait to see the number that we raise. Um, and if you guys do pick one up, please put, post it on Instagram. Um, you know, share the love, um, get more people involved and stuff. And then in me, yep, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say Myanmar slash Burma. Yep. Like, uh, if you guys want to learn more about it, this is going to sound super weird, but the last Rambo they made the bloodiest movie of mm-hmm. all time. Um, it was actually about that. And if you watch after the movie, they explain like why it's called Myanmar mm-hmm. and Burma. Like one is the mm-hmm. army occupation and one is like, um, actual people of the country who want to just live there yeah, okay. and how like it how it came into that situation and, and why people are leaving it and why people want to get away cool. and why they're being murdered yeah that's sad topic <laughs> but um yeah anyway in my glass um hey, is hey. the glenmorangie quinta rubin which is a port finished whiskey um if you want check uh, uh we have a video up for finished whiskey so this is definitely in there but um yeah no um have this one um i was inspired by scotch and Sif's post today so I was like, hey, his was mango flavored. I'm like, I'm jealous. So I was like, oh, let's get some port in there. So yeah, that's what's in my glass today. And then... Which is funny. Yeah. So this glass, it's uh, it's not port finished. It's finished in Amontillado sherry. Yeah. So I just love the word Amontillado. <laughs> if you watch House of Cards, they make a reference to it once or twice. Um, but yeah, Amontillado sherry that it's finished in. So it does have some mango notes, which are pretty awesome. Oh it's got uh, raw brown sugar. And then delicious, delicious, delicious toffee. And to be honest, the Glenmorangie line, I, I've been very hesitant back in the day just because of the price tag. But the flavored whiskeys, man, they're, they're amazing. Well, finished whiskeys, not flavored whiskeys, sorry. Finished whiskeys are amazing. <laughs> flavored. Uh, well, I'll talk about some stuff later about some flavored stuff. But no, I, I definitely like it a lot. Um, I can't wait to actually grow this collection. So, um think uh carson scotch for everyone he's got a really nice collection so i'm um, shout out to him dude like i've been looking at what he's buying so then it kind of follows that and then i know you had um a video on scotch and yep. Sniff about the milshan and stuff like the finish uh finished whiskeys as well so yes yeah. but speaking of growing your collection yep. 
What did you pick up this week? Um, I didn't pick up much this week, um, to be honest. Um, I've been doing a lot more reviews. I got quite a few samples that people have sent me, so I'm kind of working my way through that. Um, my two, I guess, tasting samples that I've picked up or I've been tasting is um, the uh, Hillhaven Lodge. Ooh, I wonder if you can get that one. The Hillhaven Lodge um, whiskey, which is more of a blend. Um, it's actually pretty good. Um, Around fifty dollars, I think it's a bit too expensive. I think around the thirty-five, forty-five range would be best for it. But um, because it's it's not. So when I look at whiskeys, when I'm thinking about fifty to eighty dollar mark, I want there to be some type of spark, something that goes, hmm, that's different, or ooh, that's interesting. Not good or bad. I just want there something to be you know unique. This one sadly is more like a run of the mill every day. Like I can use it for blending. It's it's easy going sipping, but it's more of my. I'm going to sit with a party, have some you know friends over, and not think about this whiskey. It's not like, hmm, hmm I hear, you know, it tastes wood, or it tastes like cola, it tastes like this. This one, this whiskey is definitely something that's like, hey, I'm drinking, I like it, it's smooth, it's easygoing, but it's not complex. So I, I rated that, I think it was a three and a half-ish. So it's, it's, it's every day time room, but then again, I did think it was a bit pricey. And then the hmm. second one is the BSB 103. So it's brown sugar bourbon. It is a flavored whiskey, so it is um, artificially flavored, sugar, and this one is cinnamon. Um, when I review whiskeys, I kind of put them in different things, like this one's for sipping, one's for mixing, and then you got your flavored whiskeys. So I did rate this, I think it was like a four, four and a half um, out of five. Out of, out of five. Oh. <laughs> and, and that's in the flavor spectrum. So it's not going to be like, oh, this complex, this is unique, you know, you get all those different types of flavors. This is like, hey, it's brown sugar and cinnamon. Tastes like Christmas cake. It's like it tells you what it is, and so you don't have to think about it. And I, dude, I put it on freaking ice cream. Oh, it's amazing. I sipped it, you know, just like normal every day. It's fine. It's it, but it's not like that. Those whiskeys, like let's say the Glamorgie Quinta Rumen that we have, I have here. It's like this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm getting, trying to get these flavors. I'm trying to pull my palate, trying to make me think. This is telling me on the bottle what it is. I can figure out what to use it for. Like I said, ice cream or just drink it on a smoky day or something like that. So that's kind of why I rated that high. I actually liked it a lot. Very so cool. yeah, that's that's what that's what I got. Uh, so what do you have? Just a bunch of weird stuff. All right, weird uh, stuff. I'll talk about the normal stuff first. Yeah. The McAllen edition number three, yep. which a lot of people, of course, have been asking tons and tons of questions about because you know when you write a blog about yep. flavors, um, they tell you a lot of flavors that they think that they're tasting in there. But I, I, honestly, I think my favorite thing about it is it reminds me a lot of the Fine Oak series mm -hmm. where the wood is more of the emphasis and you know the wood flavors are more of the emphasis but somehow magically um, they do a really really good job of bringing citrus into the mix and then smoothing out and really making round the the sweeter notes instead of just harsh tannic wood you actually get to taste like everything that you everything else you want to taste you know instead of being like this is really good and it's got some sweetness to it but it's you know that it's missing something mm -hmm. even the 17 fine oak and 18 fine oak which is the same thing like even those kind of have that feel where you're like oh man i wish i could get a little more sweetness or something in this gotcha um the number three does it and it does it well and then uh the other thing i got and i i, I asked the owner of this distillery if it was cool that i talked about this that's cool but in the mail i got a project number one it says tax paid <laughs> this guy's serious oh, yeah. um from brooklyn which is that distillery that i was talking about before um hopefully do i just block this with yeah, the light a but if you can oh, see God. it, you can see it's is that the label. Uh, so it's a wow. Yeah, this is the label. You sent me a label. He sent you a label, so man. Is, Look at that. Yeah, it's product number one. And of course, I asked him today if it's cool that I take pictures of it and talk about it. So he said it's fine. Um, Brad Easterbrook, the distiller, and it's it's interesting. I told him I would get more into it, but the the strangest note that came across in it was definitely thank you for adding those comments. It's easier to see. <laughs> the, the 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 weirdest note that um that he added to it that that you can taste in it is ginger or i'm not sorry not ginger ginseng. ginseng okay and it was yeah it was really weird to get because you know like being being half asian you're like oh ginseng yeah. i know that flavor and then tasting it in there he was like yeah there's some weird note that i don't know something something and i was like i was like dude it's ginger like yeah. this ginseng? tastes like yep. medicinal old or ginseng sorry it tastes like medicinal old like Chinese yeah ginseng, ginseng yep. root like yeah it has that mm, i don't Is know it it's not the best so, flavor, but it's not bad yeah, that'd be fun like just to kind of pick that out like well me being from asia as well right just you know that flavor, so that'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah, it's in everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Red Bull, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, so those are the uh, the two new things that I picked up this week. That's all. The Tain is not new. It just 
Tane was like, actually, that was one topic I thought we should talk about one day is like forgotten bottles on your shelf. Ooh, yeah. And then you get just too many bottles. I have bottles, a few of those that are like stuck in the back and you're like, ooh, look at that. And then you try it. And yeah. You've... I've had, I've had this Tane for like mm, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. And today, just for whatever so reason, it just cracked some, cracked some of it open, took a picture for Instagram. And then yeah, I've just been, I mean, this is my maybe third ounce. I've been killing this thing. Damn. So good. Yeah, then uh, we've got Dram Dude over here. He's got some uh, Belvini 14 Peat Week. So I'm still waiting for my bottle. Um, I think you are too. So, no, um, Dram Dude, yeah, let us know in the comments, man, how you like it. Uh, I know we're very interested about it. And, you know, that rolls in straight to our topic, which is. I've had it. You had it? Oh. I've had it, and, it, and it's good. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> I had it. Thanks, man. I good. had it at the Belvini. I had it at the Balvenie 50 tasting. Ooh. I forgot about it completely. If it wasn't for uh, my my camera guy Jason reminding me, I would have forgot that I even tried yeah. it. But um, yeah, this week the topic on uh, it's good. <laughs> this week the topic is going to be uh, peat for peat for non beers. Yeah. So people who don't like peat and what you can drink, so you can still get some street cred or some peat cred yep. with your your friends without you know drinking. So the the reason why I think we brought this up is because um so. Our buddy Wally over here was on uh, the Scotch Test Dummies. Um, they definitely drilled them a little bit with the peat, which is kind of funny. If you guys haven't checked that, <laughs> check that show. It's on YouTube, Scotch Test Dummies. Just Google it and you'll find it. And uh, That's kind of it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they definitely drilled you on the peat. And I do know that when I was looking at the comments, a lot of peat heads over there. So, uh, I mean, it's a, it's typically what people think of when they think of scotch. But if you ask me to get people into drinking scotch whiskey the goal is not like hey by the way i'm gonna shove this you know fire brick in your yep. face and you're gonna eat this creosote i think a lot of times when people think of you know expensive whiskeys they think of mccallan yeah, and they're sure. you know minus minus the 21 you really think of like that sweeter space side type yep. flavors you know and with Glenfiddich number one selling you know whiskey in the world it's like the number one single malt like that's it's the same kind of vein like people want fruit people want sweet yeah and that's okay. And but you can you can have both. And the, and the real reason why I think this a lot is because you know the Japanese resurgence in whiskeys, everyone likes that sweeter note. I know there's Japanese um, peated whiskeys. I know that, but that's what kind of got people on board with that sweeter sherry. I think sherry is definitely what got people into it. In the lighter. Uh, the Mizunara, Mizunara oak gas. So, <laughs> adding those weird. Notes. Yeah, so I, I definitely feel as though that there are quite a few people that if you don't get introduced to peat early on you don't really think about it. And then when you have it, you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. But the problem is it's so polarizing. If it's like in your first drink, yep. you you have only two kinds of people like, Oh, I tried scotch. It was horrible yeah. because fire. Yeah. Or you have people who are like, I love how Cole Leela kicks me in the face. Yeah. That's, that's it. You don't really have, there's no middle ground for this. Yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about the middle ground today yeah. because, because that's what we need. So yeah. Golly, let's, uh, let's start off with you, man. What, what have you got for our beginner Pete heads or people that are getting uh, into it? Not to plug somebody who just sent me a bottle, yeah, but they did send me a bottle, even though I went out and bought another bottle. Um, the new Jura 10, which is actually a mix of half peated and half not peated that's been matured in uh, bourbon barrels and then finished in Oloroso sherry barrels. Like the fact that they use half peated distillate and they use peated distillate cola, that's disgusting. But the fact that they use half peated distillate and half non peated distillate is how you get this amazing mix of flavors that are actually really, really good. So if you're looking for something to try, that's got some of the peat notes like smoke and it's got some of the a little bit of you know like fire without like squid ink or some of the grosser flavors like tar and asphalt art bag um you can definitely get that in this jura so that's a really really nice thing to get and then uh do you want me to just go on through the rest of these i can roll through them if yeah, you want if you, it, it's up to you man if, if we you can want talk about them, um or we can talk about it oh no, yeah let's talk about them one by one to be honest i'm kind of new all right. to all that stuff too so like hey you know, sure let me get an education as well yeah, this is the Jura 10. It's uh, it's actually so they had a Jura 10 Origins before, mm -hmm. but this is a new release that they've done. So, and they tell you it's a rich and rounded balance of subtle sweet smokiness with sweet sherry cask finish. But the the best part about this, and the only reason that I even still like this, because I told them I'm gonna give 100% honest review. Yep. If I don't like it, it's gonna be garbage. Mm -hmm. I love this because the texture. It's like butter. It's like straight motor oil on your tongue. It's, I mean, it's amazing. The the I, I can't explain the mouthfeel of this without you trying it. Maybe if you took some like melted butter and you just started pouring it on your tongue. Really melted butter, like, man. That, 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 that kind of yeah, flavor? It's, it, that viscous, oh, that thick. viscosity. Yeah. Like, it's, oh, oh, that's Isn't good. that like what people get in like the pappy, right? Is, is that close? How, how close is the viscosity on that? Pappy's like, pappy's like eating crushed velvet. Okay. Like that, 
that flavor it's not the same because like what this is, is it like in slick between oil. is it closer what how on the spectrum what do you it's too different okay, because too different. like slick slick oil butter is like smooth mm-hmm. and then you've got velvet which is like it you know um what about cod, you know cod like, oil right like how thick and viscous that is is it yeah i don't need cod no, oil like you know if you have those cod oil pills and all that stuff that you can you can see how oily it is it's weird is it that more jura that's like this that's like this jura that's more okay. jura and that's yeah. what i'm trying to trying to find a yeah uh, mix all righty, so um, you got the Jura Ten. So you think that's pretty good for basic? It's not. It's not too strong and peat in your head. What? It's perfect. It's a good balance of sweet and peat. Awesome. Peat. All right. So we're doing. All right. All right. And, um, what do you got next? Uh, right. We'll go in order of like peat. We'll we'll just get a little stronger at gotcha. a time. Um, next one is going to be the Highland Park Dark Origins, okay. which yep. is peat, peat distillate that's been finished in cherry casks. Um, Double first fill cherry cast yep. and for naturally richer dark whatever. Um, the best part about the dark origins, besides it's being canceled and they're not making it yep. anymore, so you should just buy it all. Um, the best part about it is again, it's a balance of sweet and peat. But the amount of peat that Highland Park puts in there is only like what is it? Anywhere from two to twenty parts per million based on you know any of their offerings. Yep. So you're not getting hammered with the peat. But there's Highland Park's peat. I don't understand it. It's more smoky. It's very. What do you mean by uh, it's smoky? more heathery? It's like campfire smoky. Is it like, like dusty yeah, like smoke? campfire smoke? Exactly. Okay. It's like campfire smoke, gotcha. not like dusty smoke. That's yeah. that's just horrible taste. But um, yeah, no, it actually dusty smoke just makes me think of texture. Like yeah, disgusting. Uh, I've had some of those. Yeah, no, kind of weird. So their smoke, their their peat is just more smoky and more grassy. Yeah. It's floral peat's a good way to put it, but I think that's part of their distillate though. Yeah. The floral notes, jam dude. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's a that's a pretty good way to put it. But it's just really well balanced again. So no, I, super yeah, enjoyable. I, I've definitely seen that on the shelves. It's something that I've, I've been wanting to pick up for a while, but you know, I haven't haven't really jumped out yet. Maybe I will. It's worth the seventy five bucks. It's so worth. Yeah, it. no, I, I jumped on the fifteen because I heard that one was going away, so I got that one. And that one's a bit of a heavier peat than I expected. Yep, Highland Park fifteen and Dark Origins are going away. Yep. Old Pulteney seventeen and twenty one. What else is going away? Everything. All right, and so what's the uh, what's yeah. the third on your list there? Um, and the last one we'll do. I was going to do McAllen 21 Fine Oak, but it's I think it's a little ridiculous for the price range. Mm-hmm. Um, both This was like the Jura is 50, the Highland Park is 75. Um, this, one's in the, <laughs> this one's in the $70 price range also. But it's, I know, Laphroaig, Triple Gask. Whoa, triple whoa, 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 whoa. A Laphroaig. You're picking a Laphroaig for a beginner. Wow. Okay. This is something you got to explain. This specific one, this is not like, this is not 10 cast strength. Okay. This is not Cargis. This is not any of those. This one, I mean, it's like... It's like a bottle of sugar and peat together, and it does such a good job hmm. of mixing the sweet and the peat. It's, it's, I don't know. It's hard to not like. I'm just surprised that you picked a Lafroy, man, or you know that. Again, you get some of the notes of their distillate, but you're not getting because it's aged in these three different barrels. And I'm not sure what the three different could, barrels it, are. And that the it longer is you age sure. something, the peat kind of drops down. So it might be something that higher than lower than a mix. Quickly. So what did they do it? And they did it in European oak casks. Yep. They did it in quarter casts, and they did it in bourbon barrel casts. So the bourbon barrel is going to give you a little sweeter. Quarter cast, it doesn't say what type. In European oak, I'm assuming, is maybe sherry. Okay. Because it's and that sherry definitely so tones it's... down peat, which is kind of cool. Yes. So. Which is and I've awesome noticed that a lot, too, when, when something mixes a sherry. And I can talk to you about one of the ones I have. So. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So um, good to me. Um, so what I have so far is a lot of uh, American kind of stuff. So I have... The Westland Winter. So this is a peated um, American whiskey, then aged in ex Oloroso sherry hogsheads. So that's kind of where this one lies. Like um, while I was mentioning before, that we have a peated um, spirit, and then it kind of rounds it out with age. This peat here is not really your iodine, you know, your regular Scotch type peat. It's very um, campfire-ish, like you were mentioning before. Um, smoky, I would call it more than a peat smoke. It's just a regular smoke, but you definitely know it comes from the peat. So, have you had that one before? I'm not sure if I share that one with you yet. I want to say that I tried it at Whiskey Extravaganza last okay. year, but I can't remember. Gotcha. And I like what Dram Dude said. That was some knowledge to drop right there. Uh, it's like the same as quarter that cast the, uh, with the European oak. Yeah, the triple wood is the same as the quarter cast, but with the European oak cast. Yeah. I think that sherry really does tone everything back down. I definitely agree on that. Like, definitely, sh- like even with this bottle alone, like the sherry knocks it down. So, and I know I've had their peat, and their peat's t- definitely PD. So, and then <laughs> um, on the Japanese side, I have the Hakushu 12. Now, let's see if this is mm. uh, the best way to see it. Uh. A little bit of so the I'm turning the bottle, by the way, if we're 
doing this in a podcast or whatever. Um, a Hakushu 12 green bottle Japanese. Um, I've been seeing this less and less on shelves now, but I don't think it's going away like the Hibiki 12 is and stuff. So this one here mm -hmm. is definitely a lighter um, peat. This is basically Japanese trying to mimic what um, the Scottish people do, and they get Scottish peat and stuff like that, and they, that's how they flame it. But this is very light. Um, at the start, I was just buying whatever Japanese ones I can get, and then this one kind of landed up there. Um, so, no, it was great. Um, I think this is my second bottle already. So I'm not a big peat head, but I definitely like the peat that's coming out of the Japanese area. Have you had the Hakushu 12, Wally? Uh, yep. We have the Hakushu 12, which is just a little bit of smokiness. Mm -hmm. It's not bad at all. And then... Um, have you had the 18? Is it 18? Hibi Hibiki 21. Oh, 21. Hibiki 21 comes to mind because it's got a little bit of smoke, but it's such a balanced blend. But yeah, that, that, that's it's the so thing. Like, if you guys didn't know, the, the 12, uh, the 12, the Hibiki is a blend of all three distilleries, right? You got Hakushu, um, was it Yamazaki and Yochi? I don't ever remember the last Yochi one. Yochi or something like that. Those three. And then, so yeah, no, there is peat in there. Um, I even heard that in Balvini's line, they actually use peat, but not the peat that's what everyone knows what peat is. Like the really smoky peat. These are different peat. It's just earth. Yeah. So I was really, when I heard that tidbit, I was like, oh, I didn't know that. It's like wet earth there. That's why you can get peat that comes in different flavors because it comes from different areas. That's why peat from like Orkney Island tastes different than, you know, peat from like the middle of the country, like what Balvenie's yeah. using. So you're getting a completely different flavor profile. Yeah. That's, I don't know. That's I think that's why I like Highland Park's peat so much. There's just tastes more heathery and it's more enjoyable, more like grass and less like well i wanted to say some curse words <laughs> it's more like grass and less like you know but yeah. it's less like uh dirt and nastiness Ugh. yeah and then the last one for me is is kind of working on your way um a bit peatier and it's another westlands westlands peat week this one is a bit higher compared to their winter but this is kind of where i draw the line when it comes to peat i've had the ardbeg ugadal that was way too peaty for me and everyone said hey this is a gateway it's in sherry cast and stuff dude no no like this wasn't aged long yes. enough the gateway to yeah, hell it, it was bad man like i looked at my wife and i was like oh i just licked an ashtray she's like you like that i'm like no but people do so yeah that's kind of where i'm like uh, uh pete's not there yet for me um it's and i've tried like what the ardbeg supernova that wasn't that bad i've tried the octomore uh, I think 3.1 or whatever. The smoke hits you on the nose, but the, the dram itself, like the overall... Sweet on the awesome. palate. I was like, this is what I want it to be. Like, yeah, okay, I get that. And this is back to my like childhood cigarettes and all that kind of stuff. Smoke, smelling those. Not good or bad. It just it reminds me of my childhood. And then, bam, knocks you with some sweet stuff. I'm like, this is this is what I like. So That's how it should be. Yeah. It should be enjoyable. That's the thing. Yeah, you that's know, there's enough enjoyable. whiskey out there for everybody to find something to like. No, I definitely, I definitely agree on that. And that's that's what you want to need. Like, I, I feel as though that um, for me anyway, whiskey is definitely a gateway to your childhood, to good fond memories, or even some bad memories if you want to remember that. But you know, it's just like it, it brings you back to something. Like a lot of people say, hey, it tastes like you know for the BSB 103, right? It basically reminds me of Christmas cake and stuff like that. And it, of course, they didn't stuff Christmas cake down there. But they definitely try to resemble something like that. So, <laughs> Jam dude just said, yeah, uh, Isla has a Isla Pete has higher percentage of phenols, which is lovely the medicinal flavor. Yeah. But if you call the taste of iodine lovely, yeah. band aids, iodine, rubber bands, you can keep yeah, that. Yeah, we can, we can sell you some stuff on the uh, medicine aisle, man. We definitely we'll, we'll <laughs> stop a whiskey, you know, thing on that, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You know, you know what is good from Ardbeg though. On a serious note, the Dark Cove. Which one though? Especially the, is the Dark Cove or the committee release. So, so the Dark Cove committee release yep. was the one they released before they did the regular release. But the committee release is actually higher, higher proof, but it actually tastes less peaty, and I don't understand why that is. Huh. Because the regular release that they had, I should have grabbed the bottle. While I was in the other room, but the regular release they have, um, for whatever reason, because of the lower alcohol content, it seems like the peat really just shines through. But it's not bad though. It is a good balance of peat and sweet. Okay. It reminds me a lot of the the Dark Origins, you know. Maybe they did them together. Dark Origins, Dark Cove, that kind of thing. Maybe. But the sherry just helps so much. Maybe I should. Yeah, Dark Cove. I don't. I know I can't find that anymore here, so I might have to ask for a second. Oh really? Yeah, you can't find like, I had the Kelpie for like three weeks where I am, and then just disappeared. I'd have to go find a Dark Cove too because I may have finished one. <laughs> may have, may have disappeared it. Alrighty, so um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we basically got through our topic. Um, 
Uh, Dram dude, Shimon, anything else you guys want us to discuss? If not, we're gonna go into our random rants for a little bit. So, <laughs> usually what we do in this show, you know, I think the last couple of shows I did rant on pricing and stuff like that. But any rant do you have so far, dude? I mean, nothing wrong with a little organization. Nothing's gonna hurt there. But um, I was surprised. So the Brooklyn that guy sent yeah. me. So the original stuff that I had picked up was the whiskey 77 weeded. Yeah, yeah. This stuff's pretty good. Like it's it's quite 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 enjoyable. But this project stuff. It's, uh, I don't know, like I said, with that ginseng note. And this is at 50% alcohol. Yeah, maybe I should ask um, you for a sample of that because I would love to taste ginseng. I think it is. Yeah, he sent me like a giant yeah. four-ounce bottle. It is bottled in Bond, which is cool. They went through that well, whole process to get it. warehouse bottled. and shit and everything. Wow. Yeah, Crazy. but it's, um, I don't see people doing for that. a weeder, it's just got some strange notes. Huh. And to be honest, I do like weeded bourbons. They're a bit sweeter, like everyone knows. So I'm definitely. Generally. Yeah. Larceny. Yeah. Dude, I've had some people that dislike Larceny a lot. I wonder why. I actually don't mind it. I don't get it. So. My, but my, my palate is not like anybody from like bourbon R forums anyways. People are like, have you tried their Prohibition 1920? I'm like, I like right, the 1920, first of all, man. Don't, don't knock Ugh. on the 1920. I actually like that. That's one of my like... I can't wait to put that review up. It's not good. I did all three of them right. at home and I was when like... I, eh. Okay, what, we'll get together one time. We'll sit there and I'll, I'll force feed that <laughs> shit to you, man. Trust me. It, but the problem is, I mean, that bottle is almost full for me. It's just, it, it has a decent nose, and then it falls flat on the palate. It just doesn't, well, it doesn't deliver. I guess, it doesn't I guess deliver. the thing I have to see is, like, what are you comparing it to, right? So, there's some things. Every, everything, everything, every bourbon I've ever had. I, I, can't, I can't do that. Like, I, I guess I have little boxes for everything. But um, I, de- I think uh, the 1920 for what a standard bourbon should be at a lower price point, I like it. I just the viscosity is good enough. The flavors are what bourbons should be. Um, the nose is great. Like, there's things that I would change of it, of course, right? I would probably like a longer finish, or I want more richer, or more, you know, I guess, stronger wheat type flavor onto it, or maybe even a hint of rye at the end. But, but overall, it's a decent, it's a decent buy. I wouldn't think it's like the best See? buy in the world, but. Yeah, no. I, I would remember it if it did something unique. And that's, I mean, like I said, once you've had, I don't know, if I have 250 bottles open in the other room, yeah. and I don't know, I'd say I've tried, definitely at least double that mm-hmm. for whiskeys. Trying to remember every one of them is just not going to be possible, you know, even with taking notes. So the goal, more or less, is to look for the ones that are unique enough to your palate yeah. that you remember them. No, I agree. And the 1920 doesn't do it. You know, if I had to pick a palate between the three, I think I think it's the 1890. Mm-hmm. That had a better palate. Just okay. it just tasted better. The nose wasn't as good, but so you know, I, I you guess just can't win the it. lucky thing about me was I did them blind as well. I did against the Statesman. So oh, I did that too. Not with the Statesman, but blind. Okay. Wow. All right. Interesting. <laughs> hey, I you can't lie. Then it, it's not like hey, I don't like it or not. It's you have been blind. Yeah. Huh. Fair enough. That's the problem. That's the problem with the palate. And, Everybody's just and different. And to be honest, that's that's what's great about it. You know, what I mean, like we don't know what we At like. Um, there's certain things I like a lot that like i like that honey one but i it's it's not for everybody if you don't want honey in your whiskey then you don't care about it but definitely um, no that like like i like you said if there's a whiskey that has like a flavor profile you dive to it like i bet you have bottles yep. of duplicate bottles of things you like so same so do i so heck yeah so which ironically is mostly mccallan i don't know how this works well i'm just <laughs> maybe uh mccallan fanboy here maybe yeah <laughs> three bottles of gas drink i don't know what's going on no I, I, to be honest i actually want to try like if if there's ever opportunity to try the one two and three on a blind tasting the mccallan yeah no that's that's the way to do it but they're so distinct it'd be easy to do well the thing is like the one, i haven't tried any of them so i wouldn't have a clue i gotcha well you just know the one is so sherry number two is ginger snap cookies with like vanilla icing and number three is this just very different yeah. citrusy deliciousness <laughs> citrusy fine oak essentially yeah. i actually yeah. did it side by side with the 17 fine oak and i was surprised by how how similar they were okay but the price difference, oh my gosh, 17 fine oak, you're going to spend 260 And it's McAllen edition number three, that's, which is a more round and sweeter flavor. You're only spending 100 that's bucks. That's what I, I can't, I, I can't, like, I just can't do that. Like, McAllen, yeah, okay, the, all the hype and all that stuff, but that much money, man. Oh, I heard the new uh, Glenfiddich Experimental 3. The ice wine one? The, the ice wine. I heard it's supposed to go for like 250 Oh. And usually I buy like two of those at a time, but I don't know about this one. Wow. I just picked up I'll a hydrate, by the way, just FYI. I just heard that. Somebody told me that, so I'm not sure how valid that is, but on Instagram, somebody definitely messaged Aren't me. Aren't they around the like, 100 hey, $130 mark, right? Generally, they're right around 100, 100 wow. bucks. This ice wine must be like, 
Ooh, I did see Scotch Troopers thing in in, um, in Canada, so they probably use the Canadian ice wine. That's expensive. Yeah, ice wine is super expensive, anyways. Yeah. yeah. What what ice wine isn't expensive? That's true. And has an age statement. Is he still? Is he still up there? Because I know that's. I'm pretty sure he's at the release. Yeah, I think he's at the release. Yes. So. Yes, he is. Yeah. Lucky guy. Lucky guy. I think he went to the Gretzky uh, whiskey facility too, which is kind of cool. Wayne Gretzky. The- yeah, the Gretzky facility is where they did it all. I know they got to ride helicopters and stuff. I might be looking through his story feed right now. Oh, they're in a giant room made out of ice for the yep. celebration. So Drinking why aren't you wine. there? Question mark. Not cool enough. Sixty thousand followers is a lot different than eleven thousand followers. Yeah, but still, hey, <laughs> he's a lot more popular. He's which is Star Wars okay. stuff, man. Who doesn't like Star Wars? Besides, yeah, he shoots Nikon, so it's okay in my yeah, book. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, for me, nothing really. Um, just trying to go through my samples. I got about, uh, I think about 60 or 70 samples. Oh, Shimon confirmed it. It is a 21 year. Yes, Tram, dude, you're right about that. It does have an age statement, so, but 21 year compared to the, I, I picked up the regular 21 uh, Grand Reserve or whatever, the, the, the rum yeah. reserve for 125. That's half the price for the same 21 wow. years. And I, I mean, I don't know how long it's been aged in ice wine, but it wouldn't be long. It wouldn't be long because it would overpower it. It's too sweet. So. Is it that sweet? Ice wine's hella sweet. It's like it's it's like uh, sipping uh, what do you call it? Uh, sugar Moscata? sugar water, basically. Oh, sugar water? Yeah, dude. It's like, two, like simple, yeah, syrup. simple syrup, two to one. It's 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 Oof. it's strong. It's you have like maybe like a little bit like that probably that much of ice wine because <laughs> it's because it's special. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. No, I assume that ice wine. But it comes um, in the tiniest bottles so the, too, man. It's small. No. Yes. Yeah, Sauternes, things like that, are supposed to be served in aperitif glasses. Yeah. That's normal. But I mean, if every saw turns is four hundred dollars, and you're getting a hundred point saw turns, and that's why. Well, you def- they're definitely getting their money back because they just fill that that barrel up with just whiskey. You get you get double your money. Easily, I'm sure. Wow, the twenty one is currently at two hundred bucks for suggested retail price. Glad I bought mine when I bought mine. Well, dude, you said the Snow Phoenix was like what five hundred, dude? I used to see that for a hundred bucks or hundred something. Yeah, I paid four thirty for the first one, and the I second had, one is costing me They were sitting on my shelf on the shelves like a couple of years ago. Like just sitting there, I just uh, I couldn't resist buying a second one. <laughs> yeah, when you said how much you paid for them, like holy shit, dude, you must really like that shit. Just to be honest. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even opened it. Because no. thank you, Tracy. Have you finished her bottle yet? Or that bottle done? No, I haven't even opened mine no, yet. The bottle, the one that tra- no, the one Tracy opened up, she took with her that night. But I should have grabbed a sample. Uh, she's like, hey, try mine, then finish it. But that's why I went and found another one so that I could open Makes mine sense. and keep this other one on the shelf till I'm ready to open it. Yeah, no, I, there's a few bottles I have to open soon, so. Uh... I gotta, gotta get to that. I probably go through my samples and open the rest. I'm telling you, if you come out in October, I don't. I, you'll be able to try the Snow Phoenix. Right. We'll have another maybe bottle. I'll, maybe I'll drop by your place. I'll sleep over. Yay! We yeah. have a sleepover. If my parents didn't move in, yeah. believe me. <laughs> All right, guys. I think that's it for us. Um, anything else, my friend? Uh, no, that's it. I think this has been another successful episode of Whiskey Entitled. All right. Catch you guys later. <laughs>